Welcome to part three of Area with Polar Coordinates. I thought we should take a look at one more example. Here we want to determine the area of the inner loop of r equals one plus two cosine theta as we see graphed here. So we want to determine the area of this region here. Now as I mentioned in the previous videos, it's often helpful to graph this on the rectangular coordinate plane as well where theta would be along the x-axis and r would be the y-axis. And this graph here should help us determine the limits of integration for our area formula. So notice the period of this graph would be two pi radians and it has an amplitude of two which has also been shifted up one unit. Taking a look at this graph here, we can determine when theta is equal to zero, r is equal to three, which would be this point here on the polar curve. Notice between zero and two pi over three radians, the radius decreases to zero, which would correspond to this piece of the polar curve. And then at this point, it starts to trace out the inner loop of this curve. Taking a look at this graph here, we can see that between two pi over three and four pi over three, the radius is negative. Well, two pi over three to four pi over three would be this region here, but notice that since r is negative, we'd be plotting points in the opposite direction or points on the inner loop. So this graph here verifies that the inner loop is traced between two pi over three and four pi over three radians. But what I think might be easier to do on this problem is to trace out half of the loop and then just double this area formula. So we're gonna use limits of integration from two pi over three to pi radians and then just double that area. And between two pi over three and pi radians, we'd be plotting points in the opposite direction or we'd be tracing out this bottom half of the inner loop. Let's go ahead and set this up and then we'll verify our limits of integration on the graphing calculator. So we're gonna have two times one half because we're doubling the area of half of a loop from two pi over three to pi radians and then r squared d theta, which is one plus two cosine theta squared theta. Again, let's get our graphing calculator out now and verify these limits of integration. Let's go ahead and press the mode key. Make sure that we're in polar mode and degree mode like we were in the last videos. And press y equals and type in the polar equation. Let's verify our window before we graph. Notice theta will be from zero to 360 because we're in degree mode and theta step will be 1.5. Let's go ahead and press zoom option four for Z decimal. And because this is in degree mode, we wanna verify that we're tracing out half of this inner loop between 120 and 180 degrees. So if we press trace, Again, this verifies that r is equal to three when theta is zero. Let's go ahead and press the right arrow. You can hold it down if you want. And we'll verify that at 120 degrees, it's at the pole. And as theta increases to 180 degrees, notice we're tracing out the lower half of the inner loop. So at 180, we should be halfway through the inner loop, which we are. So this does verify our limits of integration. Okay, let's go ahead and see if we can evaluate this definite integral. Two times one half would be one. We need to go ahead and FOIL this. So we'll have one plus four cosine theta plus four cosine squared theta. Now we do have to apply the power reducing formula here, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's 
let's go ahead and simplify this. Now let's go ahead and take this over to the next screen, but notice that notice this simplifies here and then we distribute we'll have two plus two cosine two theta. Let's go ahead and combine this two with this one on the next screen. So we'd have three plus four cosine theta plus two cosine two theta. Now we'll go ahead and integrate. So we'll have three theta plus four sine theta. Now here we would perform U substitution. And since d theta is equal to one half du, we'll have two times one half sine two theta. So first we'll replace theta with pi. So we'll have three pi plus four times sine pi. Well, sine pi is zero. Plus this would be sine two pi, which is also zero. And now we'll replace x with two pi over three. Let's go ahead and sketch a reference triangle for this one. So we'd have negative one, square root three, and two. So we'll have three times two pi over three. Plus four times the sine of two pi over three. That'll be four times square root three over two. Plus the sine of four pi over three. Well, that would be this reference triangle here, where the only difference is the opposite side is now negative square root three. So this would be plus negative square root three over two. Okay, let's see what this comes out to. Three pi minus two pi minus two square root three plus square root three over two. So here we'll have pi. This would be the same as negative four square root three over two plus one square root three over two. That's negative three square root two over two. So if we wanted to get a common denominator here, we could put this over one, multiply the top and bottom by two. So we'd have two pi minus square root three all over two. So this tells us that the area of the inner loop is equal to two pi minus square root of three, all divided by two square units, which would be the area of this yellow region here. Okay, I hope you found this additional example helpful. Thank you for watching.